Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have two great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, Hotel Guest Meltdown Leads to Lifetime Ban Across the City. The second story, How I Broke Free from an Unappreciative Job and Found My Worth. The first story is, You throw keys at me and I'm the a-hole? I work mostly second shift, and very occasionally in a. On Halloween, we are allowed to dress up in a costume, provided it's appropriate. No big deal. Keep this fact in mind for later. I go on shift at three, and I'm dressed pretty conservatively as a cat, complete with a pink nose drawn on my actual nose with lip liner. I'm bop bop bopping along to a pretty slow day but all of our rooms of a certain type are sold out due to a large company and long-term guests mostly. A guy comes in and he's with a relatively small church in the area. They have a whole thing arranged, and I get our sales manager to talk to him because they haven't been in the entire year I've been here. While our sales manager chats up the pastor, the guest from hell comes to the desk. HB will be the guest, and me is, well, me. HB, I'm checking in. I'm a carbon member. Me. What's the last name on the reservation, sir? HB, Hellbeast. What was so hard about that? How many carbon members does this tiny hotel actually get? For reference, we currently on an 80% night for 108 rooms have 30 carbon members in house. Me, I'm sorry, sir. We have a few carbon members still in our arrivals tonight. I see your reservation here. Unfortunately, we weren't able to put you on the first floor as requested. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. HB, that's unacceptable. Someone called me to confirm I was coming in and they should have reserved my first floor room. How dare you call me and not be able to accommodate my request? At this point, the pastor is outright staring at the situation unfolding, and the sales manager has started walking towards the back to get our temp GM. Me. As I said, sir, I'm sorry. But the first floor has been taken up all week due to a group. They're due to check out tomorrow, so after housekeeping gets to the rooms, I can move you if you wish. HB. I'm a disabled veteran. I shouldn't have to stay on another floor. I'm not normally an a-hole, but y'all really peeved me off by calling and not having my room. Me. Because it's a question of disability, I can put you close to the elevator so you don't have to walk very far if that's acceptable. This is one of our last two rooms. I'm sorry, sir. HB. Don't effing say sorry if you can't fix it. Your sorry does nothing for me. Me. That's unfortunate. Are you still wanting your reservation, sir? Or should I see if our sister property, located at 20 miles away, has a first floor room available for the night? HB, I still want my reservation, but you need to comp a night or give me extra points. Me, unfortunately, sir, I can't do that, but I can speak to my GM when he's out of his meeting and let him know your complaints. HB picks up the keys I set in front of him. You stupid B, just give me the effing form so I can go to my room. I hand him the room to sign after getting his ID and credit card. He sees that it's our top floor near the elevator and hit flips his SH. HB, you can't give me a lower effing floor? Are you stupid or just bad at your job? Me, I'm sorry, sir. That's the only floor where we had your room type close to the elevator, and we try and accommodate disability as much as possible. HB huffs and storms off. The pastor who had watched this all go down says to me, you handled that with grace and dignity that I wouldn't have had in that situation, before he and the sales manager finished speaking. I turn the corner and the temp GM and our FOM are standing directly behind the separation wall, and immediately ask me if I'm okay. When I affirm that I'm okay, they compliment me. 20 minutes later, HB comes down to the front desk. The first thing he does is throw his key sleeve at me, right as the FOM comes around to the front. The FOM immediately gets between the desk and I, blocking me from the man's view. He's like 6'3 in build. HB is pale when I peek around FOM. FOM calmly tells HB that he needs to leave, or he will call the police to escort him out. HB starts sputtering about how he's a carbon member and we can't do that to him. HB asks to speak to our GM. Temp GM comes around the wall. He says, sir, you need to leave. You're no longer welcome at our property, now or in the future. Temp GM escorts the dude to his room. And when he's escorting him out the door, he yells at me that I'm a lying bee, who won't get away with this, because he will call corporate. Later I found out between the SM, the FOM, and the GM, the man has been blacklisted at all the hotels in the city. 
This is particularly inconvenient for this man, as we're a smaller city that has a major NFL team stadium a mile and a half from the hotel, and we're situated between the two major cities for businesses in that area. Our NA told me that he got a call of an angry man cussing at him about not being able to get a room anywhere, because that B lied about him and must be sleeping with someone to have that kind of pull. The second story is, I have a story to tell. I'm currently a maintenance technician for a very big, very wealthy pharmaceutical company. Although the company as a whole is an SH show and a half, my department is very cool. My boss is fantastic, and I'm paid very well with excellent benefits. Most nights I do basically nothing, and I'm free to tell almost any manager in the plant to pound sand if they hassle me. This was, of course, not always the case. I had done mostly hard labor and service jobs until I ended up in manufacturing. I was then fired from my first manufacturing job, which trust me is a story for another day. I bounced between jobs and ended up working for a hot melt service company. Hot melt machines are essentially machines that melt a material down and pump it through hoses and then guns. Almost always it's glue. These are ubiquitous machines in manufacturing. So anyway, it was attempt to hire position as a gun assembler. Simple enough work for like 11 hour pay. In mine side, I would have been making $11 an hour making guns that the cheapest and easiest to make would be sold for $7.50, and you could bang out a handful an hour pretty easily. There's of course machining labor costs and costs of materials, but still, it's a very high profit margin industry. And this is a third party unofficial company offering the cheap option. I'm only giving this information for context later. So anyway, the guy who interviewed me, who was the owner's brother, genuinely nice guy and fun to work with, one of the few people who didn't treat me like a freak, decided to stick me with their, I'm not sure what to call him. Lead engineer, I suppose. He didn't have a title. He was the guy who fixed stuff and essentially the only source of technical expertise on the machines outside of the owner himself and a few others and he vastly outstripped them. Simple stuff. Clean off boards. They'd come back from customers coated in dust or a decade of grease if they weren't cared for at first, then prepping materials so he could make wire harnesses then making the harnesses. We got along, not well and not all the time, but I was the first person in like 15 years he put up with. Freaks of a feather, I guess, and he was definitely an eccentric. At first, it seemed like the perfect job for me. I was learning and doing things I'd always wanted to do and been drawn to, but I'd never had the chance or the discipline to go to school. This guy, let's call him T, I guess. He taught me things, small things, basic things, theory and practice, troubleshooting skills and habits. He said I had the aptitude to learn this stuff, which was apparently the highest praise he'd given anyone ever. I was proud. I felt valued. I had found something I was good at, exceedingly good at even. This was like five years ago. I'm 30 now. So time goes on. I'm doing more stuff around the shop, taking on more tasks and responsibilities. I made an inventory and serialization system from scratch. T showed me how to do basic repairs and turned over all the machine refurbs to me. This was the meat and potatoes of what we'd do. Take in the electronics from the machines, clean them up, inspect, test, repair if needed, make up all new harnesses and wear parts. So this was all me after a while and I'd streamlined everything so I could bang out a week's worth of refurbs in like two days. Then I'd just spend the rest of the week researching or testing, you know, learning stuff. Learning new things was the real value of the job to me. I'd been hired full time after six months. I was making like 12.50. Worth noting that this is a small company maybe 30 to 40 employees. Big fans of the whole we're a family here kind of thing. They got in a new laser for making parts and cutting shims. Owner asked me to figure out how to use it and I did. The thing was a piece of junk and very obtuse, but I had it singing. Even figured out a technique to embed metal into glass that no one else had. This was, as far as I could tell, entirely unique. I asked every laser company I could, hit up art galleries and curators, scoured the patent office and research papers. It was entirely novel. And this was one of the first events that really started souring me on the company. I took it to the owner and the production manager who was the guy in line to take over the business. Nice enough guy, but he didn't like me. Almost none of the office staff liked me. Now to preface this, I had made some mistakes early on. Costly ones, dangerous ones, but not ones that were any worse than anyone else had done in the past. By all rights, he could have canned me. T stuck up for me and insisted I stayed. So I showed the manager the glass thing. He thought it was cool. I presented all my findings to him, showed how it was novel. I asked for more time and materials to develop the technique. He took it to the owner with the sample pieces. Word came back. 
We don't want to get into the greeting card business. It seems silly in hindsight, but I was gutted. This was a genuine value add. It's not like I didn't have the time. And this was the other piece of context I hadn't gotten to. The owner's opinion of me soured very shortly after I went full time. He saw me doing stuff other than refurbs and cleaning and simply assumed I was lazy or bad at my job, despite anyone informing him to the contrary. Never mind that I'd streamlined a massive chunk of his business. Never mind that I'd gone above and beyond in every area asked to and been searching all the time to better his bottom line out of some misplaced sense of loyalty or the assumption that such effort would be rewarded in kind. So anyway, my one year mark comes by. I was hoping for a decent raise. I mean, my job had evolved and encompassed so much more than it did at the beginning. 25 cent raise, 12.75 an hour. No performance review, nothing. Just a silent little uptick on my paycheck. This is where I started to feel slighted. I still went above and beyond, still was trying to learn and teach myself as much as I could but solely for my own benefit. Started showing up late. Really just got the SH out of it. I felt worthless. I felt like this is as good as it got. Went like this for a while. Perhaps it was intentional on the owner's part. I had a sense of loyalty toward T. He was kind of my boss, kind of not. Mentor might be a better term. The owner and the owner's family treated him like a mascot. They poked fun at him and his eccentricities. He worked in between two shelves in the corner of the building, out of the way mostly forgotten unless someone needed him, which is how he preferred it to be honest. He was not what anyone would call a people person. But still, I was offended on his behalf, a ridiculous notion in hindsight. But here was the man that basically held up the company on his back and you treat him like a joke? But I began thinking of myself and my long-term outlook. Is that all I'll ever be? Is this where I'll end up working forever? I could never find a place that I like as much as this, right? But here's the thing, I didn't like it anymore. I was starting to slow down learning things. I mean, I still was, but it wasn't an everyday thing of adding to my skill set. I'm not sure why or when I shifted from depressed to peeved, but it happened somewhere in there. I looked around at everything I was doing. I asked for a raise. I demonstrated everything I was doing for the business and how I was still trying to add value to the business where I could. I was denied. All right, we can play that game. So I freshen up my resume. I started shotgunning it out everywhere I could that I thought would fit my new skill set and with better pay. It did not take long. So fast forward a bit, coming up on my two year mark. Oddly enough, the owner was starting to act nicer to me, like actually making eye contact and acknowledging my presence. I have confirmation of a start date for my new job. Awesome, ask for a moment with the owner. I give him my two weeks. He hymns and haws and I'll never forget what he said. That's a shame. It felt like you were finally starting to learn something. No counter offer, nothing. So I spent the next week blowing through all my work. I leave detailed notes on everything I do mostly because I sympathize with the people who are going to have to come after me and pick up the slack. It's a personal thing. Maybe foolish in hindsight, but I'd rather feel good about something than not feel good in the name of effing over someone who effed me. But I destroyed all my notes, all my saved programs, all my research, everything. And I had blocked those files from being backed up on the company server anyway. So this all took a week. What to do with my last week? I don't know how to play solitaire. I spent the last week teaching myself how to play solitaire. I didn't show up the last day. I didn't care. The lesson I hope people take away reading this is that you're always worth more than they say you are. Do not be afraid to leave a job. There is a personal dignity you give up by working a job that's making you miserable. Know what you're worth. Look out for yourself because no one else will. And F it, play solitaire on company time. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when the new video comes out and hit the like button to support the channel. Have a good day.